Last hand, he checks. And Daniel's going to continue his aggressive play in this hand. And 25. bet 8,000. And on his pair of nines, Sean makes it 25,000. Daniel immediately throws his hand away. And he's a likable guy, that Sean Chacon. Well, Sean Chacon might have the bad boy poker persona, but there's another side of this player that we might not always see at the table. I have a beautiful wife, beautiful little girl. She's um, eight years old, and I love her to death. He told me downstairs um, after the last uh, last match that he's playing this one for Tatiana, our daughter, Tati. And uh, it made me cry. I was really excited for him and for her. Playing poker takes away from being a good dad. She's eight years old, and she beats up on 12 and 13-year-old tennis players. And she's the future of tennis. I'm counting on that for sure. She's better looking than Anna Kornikova. Stronger than Serena, and she's going to be better than, uh, better than uh, Sharapova. That's a nasty mix, but it's the way it's going to be. Sean was kind of light at his feet on the tennis court. They reminded me of Warren Sapp with a tennis racket. <laughs> <laughs> From Chacon's tennis kid to his match with kid poker, blinds at 3 and 6,000. And Chacon with a suited king four. Raises it to 13,000. Sean's got his playing shoes on. Daniel with 4-7 offsuit. And he's going to call a $7,000 raise with a 4-7 offsuit. They're both gambling here, especially Daniel. Maybe he's having second thoughts. He can't get the chips right. There he goes. Flop is... Seven, five, ace, two clubs, a pair of sevens for Negrano, who quickly checks. Dan got real lucky there. Sean's also got a four, but Daniel caught the one card he needs, a seven. There is an ace out there, and Sean raised before the flop, and he bets again. 17,000 with nothing, and Daniel's going to call, it looks like, with his pair of sevens. Well, this is where Daniel needs that guy to yell at him to go all in be correct advice right now. Turn is a three of diamonds. That makes them both double belly busters. They'd both make a straight with a six or a deuce. Daniel checks. He's not comfortable with that ace out there. But Sean cannot follow up, cannot pull the trigger. The river a six, and that makes both players the same straight. And that's a great card Daniel feels for him. Doesn't feel that Sean's played this hand at all like he could possibly have a flush. Daniel bets 20,000. I'm all in. Oh, Shikan goes nice. all in. This is amazing. I understand why Daniel thinks that Sean doesn't have a flush, but I'm not certain why Sean is so sure Daniel doesn't have a flush. Daniel called on the flop, he checked on 4th Street, and he let out when the third club came on the river. Sean's got a straight, but there's actually better straights out there, too. Daniel can't figure it out. You have no clue what I have, do you? <laughs> no clue. All right, I'm just going to show you, and so I can think together. We can think together. I'll, we'll sweat it together, buddy. We'll sweat it together. I got me a straight. Daniel turned over his hand. I got me a straight. Which makes Sean feel very comfortable. I got me a straight. That's what I got. Worst that can happen for Sean here is that he'll split the pot. Daniel throws his hand away, he'll win it. Sean's really comfortable now. I got a straight. Daniel has a straight, by the way, Matt. But I think he can beat it. He still hasn't made a play here. He's trying to get a read on Sean. If Daniel calls, this is a split pot. My friend, we're back to square one. He folds his hand. Daniel yeah. His away. Daniel he talked himself out of calling right there. No, he bluffed me. <laughs> you sick puppy. Maybe he had king four, same hand. Daniel incorrectly assumed that Sean would not make that play with just a four, and Sean by accident, nice made one of the best plays in the tournament. Wow, from that wild hand to the outside table where Sam Farha has Ted Forrest down to just over 40,000 in chips, a seven to one chip advantage, blinds big here at five and 10,000. Sammy calls with a 10-8 off suit. And Ted Forrest moves all in on his ace five. It's the right play. Ted's got to double up. He's got an ace. 
And Sammy's trying to figure out if it's worth it for him to call 30,000 more. And he does it. I think that's the right play also. Ted Parson moved all in for an additional 30,600, and Sammy Farwell has called. He's only a 43% underdog, and that's what he was hoping for. It's a pretty good hand for Forrest to go all in. The blinds were big enough to where he was going to have to make a move at some point soon to begin with. Sammy needs a 10 or an 8. Flop is king, 7 deuce. No help for Sam. Ace high, still the best hand. He needs it to hold up to escape elimination. Gonna have to catch a 10 or an 8. Turns a jack of diamonds. That gives him an inside straight draw. He could win with a nine. Farha eliminates Forrest with an eight, nine, or ten. Rivers of four of diamonds, and Ted Forrest's ace high hangs on to win and double him up. Ted Forrest is back to 81,200. We got a match again. The quarterfinals at Caesars continue right after this. Welcome back to Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Inside the poker room, we rejoin the action at our featured table where Sean Chacon leads Daniel Negreanu. Looks to me like Daniel's still thinking about that last hand. And this lady's thinking about <laughs> Daniel. Quiet support for Daniel Negreanu. And you know what, uh, Gabe? I've shifted my allegiances back to Daniel Negreanu as well. Just thought I'd throw that in. Lines at three and six thousand here. He lost you there for a brief second, but you came right back. I'm back on board. Raised. Sean raised with ten deuce offsuit, continuing his aggressive play. Raised to eighteen thousand, and Daniels called him with queen ten. Sean has really gotten aggressive in this match. Flop is jack ten eight. Both players flop tens. Yes, but Daniel also has a straight draw. He makes a straight with a nine. He's got a much better kicker. He checked. And Sean's continuing his aggressive play, bet another 18,000. Daniel moves all in. And Sean's got to know now that he's beat. Even if Daniel has a draw, Daniel probably has such a big draw that he's a favorite over Sean's hand. Sean just doesn't want to give up. You couldn't have a queen jack of clubs. I couldn't? Why not? Why would you? That's a good hand. Queen Jack of Clubs would be a good hand right now. Call you raise back that. Oh, before the flop. Man, you know, you don't have a clue how I play, do you? <laughs> That's why you raised me that hand with the stupid bluff. You should have known I had a straight there. That was silly. You play silly sometimes. The board reads Jack of Spades, 10 of Clubs, 8 of Clubs. Daniel has Am I selling comfortable? Do I look comfortable? I'm selling it. I'm trying to sell comfortable. Am I comfortable? Who are you rooting for now? <laughs> if he calls me, I'm so dead. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm totally dead. If he calls, I've got like, I don't even know if I have an hour. He should be comfortable. He's a 10 to 1 favorite on the Card Player Magazine percentages. I'll, um, if you got a fluster, I'll call. If you don't. I can't play like that. Why not? I, I, got like a small, that. I got a pair. I got a small pair. I can't, I can't, I can't tell you exactly what I have. That's just, that's against, you know. That's Here, just, I, here's what I got. Well, you so got a 10. Turns over 10 In this tournament, it's legal to show your opponent your cards. Most of the time, it's not. In a roundabout way, y'all. Daniel's really doing a lot of talking now I'm here. Comfortable because I know he's not going to call. <laughs> yeah. You got to realize everything that Daniel says here is designed to make Sean call. 